I walked around a flea market and scanned the whole selection, looking for some retro games to add to my collection. I came across one stall of games, all of which I had already got. Well, all except for one game, the most intriguing of the lot. Yes, this game is famously bad, that I am aware, but as a collector, I must have it, because it's so valuable and rare. I picked it up to have a look. A sealed copy of Cheetah Men 2? It was worth an absolute fortune. I wondered if the seller knew. I asked the guy for a price, as my heart began to race. He knew nothing of its value, so I made an offer in haste. But when I got home, I took a better look, and my excitement had decreased. It was not the 1992 original, it was the 2012 re-release. This version does not hold much value, especially as it is no fun. The only difference, this one is completable, unlike the original one. Back then, you'd get stuck on level 4 after defeating the mini-boss. Imagine spending all that money, and then realising your massive loss. But in this version of the game, there are more levels you can play. However, it still remains very glitchy. That's pretty shameful, I say. Most of the enemies you encounter are too close to the floor, and since you can't duck to shoot them, it's a problem you can't ignore. Some enemies you can't jump over, there are some you can't avoid. You have no other choice but to take a hit. It makes me so annoyed. For the story behind this game, we have to go back to 91, when Action 52 was released. Its awfulness was second to none. The cartridge had 52 games, so many to explore, but it did not take long to realise they were all terrible, glitches galore. But of all the games on the list, Cheetah Men was the best. Although still awful in every way, it stood out from the rest. In 92, Cheetah Men got a sequel, although the company had their fears that the game would make them a laughing stock, so the carts were stored away for years. Eventually, the games were discovered and were sold for outrageous prices to willing and desperate retro collectors with their retro Nintendo devices. But what about the lost levels? How did that come into fruition? It was because of Greg Pabich on a controversial Kickstarter mission. The problem people had with it, he was asking too much for the game. The final product was still as bad as ever, since most of the glitches still remained. What's worse is that somehow, it's worth more in its seal, but whether or not I open it, the game just has no appeal. The lesson is, collecting should be more fun, so remember that on your quest. Only buy games that you're willing to play, because you'll treasure those the best.